Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Today we are on the white wine of the Rhine. Uh, actually, it's not Riesling, if, you, if that's what you thought it was going to be. Uh, white Alba Rhine Rhino Alba Rhino. Uh, that's, that's where people think the name has come from. Is it Riesling that has mi migrated down to uh, Galicia in, uh, uh, in northwest Spain and over the border into Portugal, where it's also known as Alba Rhino? Um, who can tell? Let's just try the wines, see how we get on with them. Two, uh, sorry, one from the 2009 vintage, but the first three all 2010. First one is Sainsbury's Alvarino uh, under there. Taste the difference? Yeah, taste the difference. Um, and um, hey, all these rich bashes. There are a few other places up in that corner that uh, make Alvarino, but uh, I think pretty much all the 99% of the the ones you'll see will be rich bashes. Dolly mixtures. I don't. I can't remember the last time I had dolly mixtures. Uh, probably on the top of a, uh, one of my children's birthday cakes and uh, bit into something and I thought this isn't icing, it's a bit of a dolly mixture that someone's plonked on the top of it. But it's got some of that, um, what I call the dry dusting of icing sugar of, of, about this. Uh, but there's also some peach apricot character. Um, not the sort of peachy apricot viognier, that's a, that's a bit more exotic and a bit more uh, uh, deeper and wilder and creamier. But this, this one feels like peachy apricot apricot freshness. Pretty yummy wine that. Um, yes, it's uh, it's young, it's good, yeah, as I say, this candied character, but then this, it, it opens out, broadens out, goes peachy, and then it's brought in by the tang of apricot. Um, it feels, it, it, it suggests on the back, what does it say, per, fish and seafood. Well, if you're going for fish and seafood, go for something that's got a bit of flavour, because um, it would, uh, it's actually got quite a bit of grunt behind it, and might be a little too, um, a little too full-bodied for some uh, delicate fishy dishes, but um, certainly I imagine if you had some mussels with that, or some yeah, garlicky mussels uh, uh, with lots of bread to mop up the garlicky wine juices, um, that will go down pretty well. So let's see whether the next one goes down pretty well. Well done Sainsbury's for shoving something like that under your own label. Uh, Zarate Alberino Riesch Bacius again. Now this is a different beast. Um, I didn't smell the, the Atlantic in the um, in, in the Sainsbury's one. In this one, um, uh, it, it's, it's a characteristic I notice more in Alvarino when you go to, into uh, onto Portugal, where they make uh, Vinho Verde, some Vinho Verde from Alvarino. You get this uh, slightly briny, salty edge and uh, a bit of. Um, um, Petillons, ever so slight bubbly character in the wine. I look at this and um, probably can't see from there, but um, round the round the rim of the glass, there's this um, yeah, there's, there's there's a few bits of carbon dioxide. Feels like it's going to be more bracing and fresh, and there is certainly some of this salty tang to the wine. Really nice. It's got that peachy apricot that the first one had, but then it's got this. Um, um, yeah, briny tang on top of it, and um, it it feels like a. Um, a more complex, more minerally uh, style. There is this um, ever so slight alka is the wrong word, but there's something um, of the, yeah, maybe alka seltzer. If you, uh, I used to love chewing aspirins. I know, I know, you know, soluble aspirins. There was, there's something about soluble aspirin about that. Um, and um, I, I used to like sucking lemons as well. And maybe I'm just a bit odd. But there's 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 something uh, almost a seltzer-like minerality that's going on here. Combine it with that little touch of the sea air and this delicate peachy fruit. It feels like maybe a more delicate, poised wine than the first one. The first one's sort of like a bit. Rah, 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 rah. Uh, this one is for the more delicate seafood. But I very happily drink this by itself. So I think I will. Oh, tasty wine. Um, let's see what the next one's tasty wine. Uh, Castro. Is it Celta or Celta or Celta? Hey, who can tell? Um, someone will tell me if I've got one of those. I'm, I, two out of three of those must be wrong. Let's give it a whirl anyway. 2010 again. Now this is more back to uh, the, the style of the first one, the edge of dolly mixture and that richer, peachier fruit than the finer, uh, more fragrant Zerati. Probably the biggest, fleshiest wine of those three so far. Um, and uh, what I find with Alberino, the good ones, um, they are nice the summer after the vintage, so when they're like 10 months old or so, but they, they're often uh, better with even more bottle age. So if you imagine, if you're in, if you're in the southern hemisphere, get round to um, a year and a bit from the vintage and it's middle of your summer. Um, 
I, I, that, that's one of the stages I find, I find them uh, looking at their best. Because it's like they've calmed down in the bottle. Uh, the uh, Dolly Mixture character that I get there and I get here, they've um, receded into the background. Uh, the peachiness has calmed down ever so slightly and sometimes you get these extra characters coming through. Um, so I like that at the moment, but I've got a feeling that um, we're in April now. I've got a feeling that, that come December, that's going to be showing even better than it is now. Uh, it looks good now. Uh, don't think it's quite as classy as the, as the Zerati, but um, uh, yeah, um, don't be afraid of having Albarino that's sort of like 15, 18 months old. In fact, we've got one of them next. Um, so let's see how this one's uh, surviving. I'm sure, uh, thriving positively. I'm, I'm, well, we'll see. Idos de Padrignan. Yeah, there are some wines that um, I think people force on the market too early. Uh, New Zealand Sauvignon is a classic example for me. Um, and, and as a result, people have started uh, overdoing the residual sugar in order to make it friendly six months from vintage, where I'd actually prefer it to, to taste it a year from vintage and, um, and, and, um, and, and for it to have been dry in the first place. Um, but hey, let's see what this one's like. Yeah, and this is what I mean. The here, um, I stick my nose in, and there is some, some of that peachiness, but there's also a slightly more exotic um, guava, mango type character. So uh, tropical fruits that have got um, uh, riper, um, maybe more exotic, fleshy flavours, but have still got the acidity to, uh, to hold them together. Uh, it feels like it's going to be really good and rich, and still, I think it's still going to have some freshness. Let's see. It does, and it's, uh, it's got that richness, it's got this slightly salty minerality that I found in the Zerate. I think the Zerate is a more delicate, poised wine, um, but um, uh, just between these two, you get a nice contrast of the richness that Albarino can do with the fine-boned character that, um, that Albarino can do. And um, it's not like which one is better than the other. They're different, and they're different faces of um, a interesting grape variety and um, I, I mean Albarino sometimes I can find it slightly on the obvious side but um, these four I'm pretty happy with them. See you soon.